ladies and gentlemen, there is going to be a stock market crash. And I don't know when it's going to happen. The market's going up today or yesterday after tanking the other day, which I said would happen in a correction. Who knows how far it goes up for it to unfortunately descend in a downward spiral in a terrible, terrible crash similar to 2008. I think hedge funds are going to go under. I think that banks could get bailed out. There are hundreds of billions of dollars in derivatives that are unregulated. That alone, I mean, we have Evergrande, we have everything else that we're talking about now, but read the articles below in the description. Financial Times, other articles. Archegos was able to make billions and billions of dollars in bets that the SEC didn't know about. The Archegos hedge fund that went under several months back, nobody knew how much debt, nobody knew how much margin they had in terms of derivatives contracts. Nobody knew how much banks like Credit Suisse loaned Archegos. Within a week, $10 billion in losses were incurred by numerous banks. Nobody knew the extent. The risk management is like atrocious. We have the, the exposure to debt. We have so many hedge funds that are over leveraged and exposed to so much debt. But I just want to read you, aside from that, I mean, we have inflation, runaway inflation. Nouriel Roubini says stagflation. Um, if you look, he's right. We have jobless claims up, a labor shortage, supply chain shortages, the consumer price index, the producer price index, the Baltic dry shipping index all up. We have the greatest credit card debt in history, the greatest amount of credit card debt. We have rent that's increasing at a faster pace than decades, than, I, I don't know if it's than ever, but look at rents, rent increases this year, okay? And we have the greatest margin debt in, in history. That's a fact. Greatest, the, the margin debt as a percentage of GDP that rivals to, uh, 2008, 2000, 1987. But here, I just want to read you this. I mean, there's so many reasons why the market's overvalued. The quantitative easing from the Fed, one, uh, pumping money into the economy, one out of every $5 is the result of quantitative easing. Now you have Jerome Powell saying, well, the Fed's going to taper next year and uh, cut back on the QE, quantitative easing, well, that's going to terrify markets. But be, even before that, you have Jim Cramer, CNBC. Hit subscribe to this channel right now. I'm going to explain why just today the most important thing you have to hear pertaining to the stock market is that Jim Cramer, Cramer says two of his biggest worries about the stock market are now off the table. No offense to Jim Cramer. The fact that he's saying this, for me, that means the opposite is going to take place. He says, well, Evergrande is not a worry anymore. And then he says, the Fed tapering isn't a worry. Okay, both are still the biggest issues in addition to, we have no clue how many Archegos hedge funds there are. They're called family firms, like very small. They're not technically not as big as the normal hedge funds. They're about well over 100 to 200 of the... Archegos sized smaller hedge funds out there where they're so uh, sensitive to price fluctuations and downward spirals in the market. Viacom went down one week and that completely tanked the hedge fund. And then you had $10 billion that banks owed. Nobody knew about this, nobody knew about Evergrande. The market's being inflated by the Federal Reserve. Jim Cramer, no offense, is wrong. Hit subscribe to this channel. Tell your friends about the Stock Market Crash channel. I literally named the channel because I, I, I believe this is going to take place. You look at everything, there's going to be a tremendous crash. Subscribe to my main channel, H.A. Goodman, on YouTube of 184,000 plus subs. I have a live stream tonight 
at around 6.30 p.m. Pacific, maybe 7 p.m. Pacific this evening. So be there. Definitely be there. And um, I just want to read you this. So Jim Cramer said a pair of major investment concerns have been resolved in the near term. No, they haven't. The first one, one resolution came to the Federal Reserve, which maintained its highly accommodative monetary policy after the central bank's policymaking arm held a two-day meeting. That meant that investors who were concerned the Fed may announce a policy tightening due to high inflation were proven wrong and needed to respond. If you were one of the inflation hawks who thought the Fed would have to take a tough line today, then you have to go buy stocks now because uh, Powell has put the concerns to rest. No, you don't. Eventually... <laughs> You have no clue if there's going to be a crash before Powell decides to tighten, uh, before Powell decides to um, either uh, cut back on the quantitative easing and begin tapering, or if the Federal Reserve decides to raise interest rates. And so, so, there, 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 so that's one issue. And the, the next issue is he says, well, uh, Evergrande's got another bill coming due tomorrow and one they owe uh, foreign bond owners. Those foreign bond owners are mostly from countries that are totally on the hook to China. So they're not going to care about these bonds. Um, <laughs> it's, not, it's not about whether they can make a payment this week or next week. It's about the fact that they have $300 billion dollars in loans that they could default on, and there are more Evergrands, there are more companies, not just the second largest developer, property developer in China, there are probably more, more companies, just like there were more Lehman Brothers and banks that were going under in this country in 08, there are more, more companies that are tied to the stock market bubble that crashed in China. We too, we have, we have not only a stock market bubble, but we have an overheated housing possible bubble. So, and in the bond market, when interest rates just go up a little bit, there's going to be a massive sell-off. So you have numerous asset classes, numerous asset classes that are perhaps ready for a loss. And this is going to be a tremendous loss. And this is going to be, uh, this is going to be a catastrophe. But no, if this is no offense to, to Jim Cramer at CNBC, but it's like, it's interesting. Um, when you have this kind of wild swing in emotion where the sky was falling one day and then it's, okay, bye, because Evergrande's not a big deal and the Fed will eventually begin tapering. It's like, well, you are prolonging the inevitable you are admitting that inflation is through the roof. Over 5% is going to get worse. You are acknowledging that China has major problems, um, that they've had issues with their stock market and a, and a uh, real estate bubble that, that already collapsed. And we see now the Evergrande catastrophe We've already had a hedge fund that went under. We had massive sell-offs in treasury bonds just because of a fear that uh, interest rates would rise. This was earlier this year. So you have so much volatility, and yet a GameStop <clears throat> uh, hedge fund debacle where one hedge fund had to get bailed out by other hedge funds. Then you had Archegos go under. Then you had Evergrande. There's going to be a catalyst. We don't know what. And I started off this segment, and I'll talk about the deri the issue with derivatives is like a ticking time, you know what? Because the same we have we have greater exposure. Banks have greater exposure to derivatives than they did in two thousand and eight, and Dodd Frank hasn't even been implemented when it comes to these derivatives. So the fact that Jim Cramer is saying two of his biggest worries about the stock market are now off the table. It's not just the fact that he's saying this, it's that he's saying this three or four days after there was almost a 1,000 point drop in the market. Does that make any sense to you? Does that make any sense to you? Subscribe to the Stock Market Crash channel. Subscribe to H.A. Goodman, my main channel. And be on my main channel tonight at around 7 p.m. Pacific because I'll have a live stream. 
Tell your friends about this channel. I would just save your money from here on out. That, I'm not telling you what to do, but if I if I was a person that that needed money for a raining day, I think everyone should just have enough money for a rainy day. Three, four, five, six, seven months, if God forbid you didn't get income. In, 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 a, save, in a savings account, forget Bitcoin, crypto, stocks, bonds, whatever. In a savings account that you could that you could use if, God forbid, there's a rainy day. Give me your thoughts below. Share this segment everywhere. Subscribe to this channel and my main channel below. Thank you.